In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use Colalab contrast profiles. So let's go and open our DaVinci Resolve project. And if you haven't downloaded already the media, your training media, please do so and import it into your DaVinci project like this. So you should have files from EO1CO1 to EO2CO5. Import them into DaVinci. Then we're going to go quickly into edit in timelines menu. I'm going to right mouse click and say create new timeline and call this timeline 201. I'm going to create it and then I'll go and just drop the first clip onto my timeline. So and then let's go into color tab right now. I'm going to just go and open another serial node and we're going to go and drop color lab onto the second node. So now we have a controls ready. So let's have a look at the contrast curves. First, I'm going to select a camera input, the Alexa, and I'm going to make sure that I'm working in Rec 709. Very good. Now, I'm going to start with the contrast option S1. So S1 is equivalent to transformation from your camera you're working with to the 2.4 gamma of your screen. So this is the most neutral or most like a mathematically correct conversion from logarithmic space to 2.4 of your screen. And I usually use this always as a starting point. So my S1 is always like, you know, telling me, okay, this is the contrast. This is what was captured, you know, on set. Now I can go and push that contrast up without losing any information. That means without clipping my highlights or crushing my blacks. So you see, I can just press on number two and all I'm going to do is I'm going to compress my contrast, but not really like a push it to the limit. So here I'm going to have number three or number four. So you see with number four, I have a very high contrast, but in my scopes, I have still not clipped or crushed. So basically the S curves are great for this kind of perceptual contrast, but without like really us having to lose any of the information. Now, if you're, for example, have selected contrast two and you say, okay, I quite like it, but you want to work more on it. Then what you need to do is you need to open your lift gamma gain controls. So for example, I want to increase a little bit contrast of this shot. I would go and push my lift in the negative direction, you know, to kind of crush my blacks a little bit more. I quite like this now, but you see on the scopes, my values are still staying above zero. That means I'm not losing any information. And then here I'm going to go onto my gain and I'm going to push my gain up a little bit, you know, so let's see what's happened with my highlight. No, my highlight also is getting rounded on the top and it's not clipping. So this is the effect that color lab does. Basically the output profile always manages to correct the colors inside the rec 709 that we're working with. So maybe for example, I'm going to also add a little bit saturation here to it. So now I have a starting point, a good look to start with. What about if I want to work in the opposite way, if I want to work with a low contrast looks. Okay. So I'm going to start doing that. So let me just reset everything. And then I'm going to start with L contrast settings. What about if I want to create a, like a flat look, a low contrast look. So for that, I'm going to start with L contrast settings and L basically starts with one, which is kind of the least flat look and finishes with number five, which is the flattest look of all. We call it also Nordic look. So if you are looking for like a flat contrast, these are basically your profiles. Now what I also do sometimes is I kind of go to gamma and then I use gamma setting to adjust my exposure a little bit, you know, to get my mid level down, you know, and I knew my neutral, or maybe I can close down my lift a little bit. And so I can have a great flat look. If I'm interested now to go for something filmic in terms of the contrast, I can go for F contrast. So how is F contrast working? So F contrast is effectively generated from sampling of the color response of actual film negative. So there is a particular device that can like measure very precisely the grayscale values of a film negative. And based on that, we would build a curve. And these are the F contrast curves. Now, 
you have one, two, three, and you'll see they're all very different in their response, but they are very analog in a way they look. So for example, like, you know, F3 has this beautiful round shadow. What I really like about all F contrast is that they give us a very soft highlight and that highlight works very well on the skin. So for example, if I was to go and want to start with a little bit filmic contrast, I usually start with F3 and then I can use a little bit my gamma here, you know, to correct or to open up if I feel like I need to do this. So I have a now nice and open look, you know, with a beautiful film curve response and with a great roll of in a highlight. And now that I have adjusted contrast, I'm in a very good position to start working on the color palette.